Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Guys, look how close I am to 40,000 followers on Twitter, 39,986 followers, getting very, very close to 40,000, which does also remind me as well, uh, I have not forgotten, I am going to be giving away two Ledger Nanos at the beginning of next month, so that's only a few days away, probably by next week, at least that's what I'm estimating as of now. But you do have to be subscribed to the channel to be eligible, we did reach 100,000 subscribers before March the 31st, so thank you guys so much for that. And so if you guys want to be eligible for a Ledger Nano, no, please do subscribe to Working Money Channel on YouTube. But, but I mean, it wouldn't hurt also if you wanted to follow me over there on the X platform as well. Crypto Insight UK saying this, okay, I want to reiterate my point from yesterday. People are capitulating all over in the XRP community. Remember, the smell of Solana around $8. And guys, I remember this thing. I remember thinking to myself, I bought at $26, give or take. And I remember thinking to myself, oh boy, did I just make the biggest mistake ever. The cryptocurrency market was in free fall. I can tell you this was back in November of 2022, December, when uh, FTX did collapse. He continues by saying, even I didn't touch it because I was scared. Then again, for Solana at around $12 to $20, I tweeted about buying because fear and FUD was just too high. With the courts roiling, FTX would be allowed to sell their Solana bags to fund their struggles legally and in regards to their customers. Yet the price didn't find a lower low. I honestly feel this is very similar in the XRP community right now. Every day it feels... Like there is more negative news, yet the price is holding and holding well in realistic terms. This is a great indicator as a trader that the local bottom is in and very, very close. It shows that even with narratives being negative, most, if not all, sellers and weak hands have already sold their XRP bag. So you guys have to remember, if you are still in it to win it, you are some of the lucky few. Often bad news does mark the bottom. It's a great lesson to learn. There's often value where you see a lot of emotion. People let the way they feel influence their decision making. In the financial markets, that is a big mistake. One last indicator, just like in the bear market, look at how much interaction negative posts receive currently about XRP compared to positive posts. Remember, when prices were low and people were calling for a $12,000 Bitcoin, everyone got behind it and rallied together because they were feeling the same way. Look at what the herd is doing and where you may think the value is. So a very, very good uh, observation here and a very good lesson in some regards uh, with regards to XRP price. Guys, XRP is just following Bitcoin at this moment. And, uh, you know, if this is your first rodeo or maybe you just have a short memory, you have to remember XRP does follow Bitcoin. It eventually happens, but it happens later in the cycle. Right now, we've got Bitcoin toying with the $70,000 price uh, location here on the chart. We have seen Bitcoin go back up to about 71500 and now it's sitting in and around here. So just kind of hovering in and around $70,000. The market is still seeing extreme greed. We are now at 82 on the chart. Market cap is at 2.64 trillion. We've got 24 hour volume. That's down a little bit. Bitcoin dominance uh, actually moving up a little bit at 52.2%. And take a look at some of these coins right now. We're seeing uh, a lot of red here on the board, uh, except for a few uh, certain cryptocurrencies, but mostly uh, the market is in red as of this moment in time. However, Bitcoin price still looking very, very bullish. If I pull out here, you guys can see on the one hour, we are still making some new uh, localized highs up here on the one hour chart. We are making higher lows, which is also a positive thing to see on the one hour chart here. Higher lows, and uh, I'm assuming this is a low too. And even if it does go down a little further, that would still be a higher low uh, if we do match this level of resistance here. Uh, before we move up. So Bitcoin is actually looking quite robust. And uh, I mean, yeah, we have been getting negative news in the space. Wow, look at that XRP price crater down to 61 cents. So toying with our emotions. Uh, and, you know, we have been getting that negative news. We have been seeing developers actually even quitting the space due to some mix-ups and what is happening with the Ripple SEC lawsuit. But we have to remember this market is still a spec market and XRP is going to rally along with the rest of the crypto space. So let's point to the positive, okay? Ripple partnered Standard Charter Bank believes Bitcoin is going to hit $250,000. Let's look at some of these price predictions here from uh, big institutional analysts. This one coming from XRP Crypto Wolf. So Standard Charter, a big financial institution, they're hinting at a bullish future for the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. It now believes Bitcoin could potentially reach a staggering 150,000 by the end of 2024, a significant increase from its earlier prediction. And then it sees Bitcoin skyrocketing to about 250,000 by the end of 2025 
and that's when we're going to see the stabilization. So Standard Charter, uh, a big player in the financial world, again, one of Ripple's original VC investors as well. So they know a thing or two about crypto, and they're saying they're projecting this is going to be fueled by uh, robust ETF inflows interest from reserve managers and the upcoming Bitcoin halving. So the Bitcoin halving event, guys, that is also coming up very, very soon. If I bring the Bitcoin chart back up here, actually, let me bring up the BTC halving chart that I've uh, created here. I created here a few years ago with the halvings here listed on the chart. So you can see we are very, very close to that halving. How many days away are we technically? Uh, we are about uh, 30 days, 29 days, give or take. So about a month away, guys, from the Bitcoin having that is also going to have an impact or historically it has had an impact. Generally, what we see is post having we do see the price of Bitcoin go down a little bit before it really does shoot up. So eyeing the having here as that inflection point before Bitcoin starts rocking and rolling. So I wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for pointing that out. Ali Charts here also saying, you know, Bitcoin whales have purchased more than 100,000 BTC over the past week alone. OK, that is worth seven billion dollars. BTC inflows going up. So this is because of the ETFs. And of course, you know, the more sophisticated uh, retail traders, I would say kind of uh, mid-tier retail traders, probably people who have been in this space for a while, but are not institutions, but do put a lot of money into cryptocurrency. They're seeing, they're reading the metrics and they're reading right into these predictions. So taking up uh, 100,000 Bitcoin over the past week, $7 billion of inflows. And I'm sure this is a lot of institutional money as well. Uh, and so Ki Young Ju also posting something about Bitcoin. This cycle is different. Institutional funds of $86 billion entered Bitcoin in the past six months. So giving us a bit of a longer term analysis here, we saw MicroStrategy purchasing in January of 2021 and then BlackRock over here. That is when they were announcing their purchases. And guys, so that equates to about $94.3 billion within this last uh, within this last little while, this last time frame here. So company BTC purchases compared to financial institution BTC purchases, you can see the number is just going up and up. And again, because of the institutional demand now for Bitcoin, Bitcoin, this is going to get the price going even higher. So um, I'm getting really excited, to be honest with you. I don't think XRP is going to be in the dirt for long. 61 cents, guys, a very good opportunity to pack your bags. And if you guys want to see what I'm trading this bull run, you can find me at patreon.com slash working money channel. I do have a list of all the cryptocurrencies. Well, the $10,000 plus portfolio are all the altcoins that I purchased for this particular bull run. You're going to see me buy them. You're going to see me push the sell button too when I decide to sell those cryptos. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how I'm going to achieve these targets, what I'm going to be looking at, the market fundamentals, all that fun stuff at patreon.com slash working money channel. Regulars in the XRP community do have their opinions about uh, why the sentiment is down for Ripple and XRP. I mean, we recently just got this news too. The SEC wants $2 billion, yes, with a B, $2 billion from Ripple. And if you guys have been hiding under a rock, uh, I'm just going to sum it up with this video here. Stories. The SEC is seeking a nearly $2 billion fine against Ripple. Last year, a federal judge found the issuer of XRP violated securities law by selling the token directly to institutions. Now the court has to issue a final judgment and decide how much Ripple has to pay for breaking the law. While the SEC says the judge should hand down a $1.95 billion penalty against the company. Ripple's chief legal officer posted on X that it would file a response to the proposed judgment next month. We should also note that while Ripple was found to have violated the law when it came to selling XRP to institutions, the judge said the crypto company didn't break the law when it sold to retail investors. But $2 billion, really? Is that warranted? XRP drops. Posting this, we've gone through all these things as individuals because the SEC says some business could have got a better deal if Ripple would have done something different. But the SEC was also just hit with sanctions in the debt box case for their gross abuse of power and misrepresenting the evidence to the court and then the audacity to tell this court, we need $2 billion from Ripple. This is Christy Warner here from the Crypto Law Podcast giving her opinion on this. Listen to this. That's the harm. So we've had this lawsuit go on for years. We've had um, XRP delisted. We've lost access to our funds momentarily. Like we've gone through all these things as individuals because the SEC says some businesses could have got a better deal if Ripple would have done something different. Um, what a joke, dude. What a joke. Uh, but the SEC was also just hit with sanctions in the debt box case for their gross abuse of power and misrepresenting the evidence to the court. And then has the audacity to tell this court, 
oh, hey, we need $2 billion from Ripple. I mean, I got to say, you know, it is a bit uh, comical that <laughs> Mickle brings this up. Some explain to me how the SEC is going to get the $2 billion. Remember back in November of 2023, the Second Circuit limits SEC disgorgement. Decision puts remedies in question in wide range of cases. So they said this, the decision could effectively blunt the SEC's ability to seek disgorgement for a wide range of alleged regulatory violations that do not result in financial harm to investors, which means the SEC's ability to seek uh, funds for remedies would be limited. And thus, how are they going to get their $2 billion from Ripple? Well, I mean, the $2 billion uh, price tag is, uh, well, a little bit, it, a little bit, a lot inflated, I think I'm going to say. And, uh, you know, some people in the XRP community, lawyers, specifically XRP community lawyers are suggesting, uh, well, at least some of them are suggesting that this uh, has been a target for the SEC. They wanted to raise uh, the number as high as they possibly could with, uh, a, you know, their vision of a reasonable explanation as to why it should be that high. But, uh, you know, they're not going to get anywhere near that amount. So that's the other point that I just wanted to make there. Utility FTW also pointing this out. OK, so let's get this straight. There's rage quitting the XRP ledger because one, they don't like how Ripple sells XRP. We talked about that the other day. I will link that video up here. They don't like how the XRPL operates, yet they are happy to take the $200,000 grant. They don't like XRP's price action. Their contributions to the community are these, okay? They have organized a few meetups uh, in general uh, and have been general cheerleaders for the XRP ledger, spoke twice at Apex, haven't contributed to Rippled Code in almost four years, Ledger City failed, and XRP Intel was useless. Utility FTW is talking about this project in particular, the end of an era, adieu to XRP, the dev null production. So these guys uh, did just recently quit the XRP ledger. I'm guessing they're going to be building somewhere else now. Um, but as Utility FTW points out here, you know, they haven't really been terribly active over the last four years or so. And I don't know if David Schwartz is in damage control or not, but, um, you know, he came out on Twitter and he was, uh, you know, talking about some of these touchy points uh, that uh, people were bringing up. This one coming from Michael Branch here, posting this article from CryptoNews.net. Ripple CTO says it is nearly impossible to avoid selling XRP. So, um, you know, as we have always known, Ripple has sold XRP as a part of their business model, but now it's just, uh, you know, coming to light. And uh, maybe it's because it's in the spotlight right now that uh, people are getting really upset about this. David Schwartz, chief technology officer at Ripple, he stated that it is nearly impossible to avoid selling XRP. Earlier, he said that everybody who holds a digital asset can sell it if they wish to. Uh, Schwartz also previously explained the tax implications of receiving XRP from a company. For instance, if Schwartz were to be given a bonus of 1 million XRP from Ripple, he would need to sell a substantial portion of this sum in order to cover the taxes owed on it. Uh, taking into account both federal and California state taxes, his marginal tax rate uh, for income earned is around 50%. So then there's the topic of abandoning the XRP ecosystem. His most recent comment came after the Dev Null Productions announced their departure from the XRPL. Uh, they cite, though, the loss of faith in Ripple's leadership due to their decision to sell XRP at the expense of retail investors as a major reason. Additionally, they criticize the XRPL Foundation for prioritizing personal objectives over community interests. As a result, the XRP-related projects like Ledger City will be discontinued and associated domains will allow to expire. They encourage the community to challenge what they see as corrupt leadership within Ripple and the XRPLF, so the XRP Ledger Foundation. Finally, we just would like to say that there is no that there are no hard feelings. And while we encourage the community to rise up against corrupt leadership, both at Ripple and the XRPLF, which squandered an amazing opportunity for their own selfish gain. So <laughs> they're, they're saying here that they're, um, didn't they just say no hard feelings? I thought that that's what it said uh, somewhere up here. And now they're, you know, pretty much criticizing Ripple for their leadership and uh, the XRPL Foundation as well. So, you know, David Schwartz, uh, I guess, uh, put maybe into a bit of a damage control situation here, but does explain, you know, the company does have to sell XRP in order to, uh, well, for many reasons, not to mention what is happening with the AMMs, right? So trades a lot here, uh, posting this according to Grok, this could increase the value of the liquidity token. So on top of which we are also getting, uh, AMM status updates. Uh, if you guys didn't catch the latest video I did on that, I mean, there's a whole issue surrounding the AMMs over the launch period. 
I will uh, find that video from this past week and I'll link it up here. As previously expected, the AMM amendment to the XRP ledger did go live on the 22nd. However, soon after, a community member identified a discrepancy in a few AMM pools, which indicated transactions were not executing as intended. A team including RippleX, Orchestra Finance, TQ, and others, uh, other members of the XRP ledger community moved quickly to identify the source of the problem. Uh, and so payment engine uh, routes liquidity through AMM pools and other books in some complex payment paths scenarios. A fix had been deployed and is being reviewed and tested. So uh, I think I did also see another update there from VET over on Twitter uh, that there is a 2.11 fix now that has been uh, implemented. The fix requires an amendment to the XRP ledger protocol, which must be voted by the network validators and maintain over 80% support for the normal two-week period before activation. Until the fix is enabled on the network, it's best for users to redeem LP tokens and not deposit new funds into AMM pools. David Schwartz did comment on this though, okay? That gives me an idea for a new feature. The AMM currently injects synthetic offers into the order book for the assets it trades. It could also do that for the order book for its liquidity tokens against those assets, injecting deposits and redeem operations as synthetic offers. So he was brainstorming and uh, this is what he came up with. So trades a lot though, uh, did a little more research and asked the AI platform Grok, well, what does that mean? In the context of David Schwartz's tweet, it appears that he is suggesting the introduction of synthetic offerings for liquidity pool tokens in the automated market maker system. These synthetic offers would represent deposits and redeem operations for the liquidity pool tokens, which would be traded against the assets and AMM trades. By introducing these synthetic offers, Schwartz is aiming to create more liquidity for the liquidity pool tokens uh, this would likely make the liquidity pool tokens more valuable as they would become more easily tradable and accessible to a wider range of users. Uh, the increased liquidity could also lead to more efficient price discovery for the liquidity pool tokens, which would further contribute to their value. So could that mean XRP value would go up uh, due to these synthetic offers, uh, which would uh, essentially be creating synthetic liquidity Hmm. In summary, the assumption that liquidity pool tokens could become more valuable as a result of the introduction of synthetic offers for them in the AMM system is a reasonable one based on the information provided in the tweet. So this is, again, just uh, AI kind of uh, going over David Schwartz's tweet here and uh, giving us its interpretation of this fix. And uh, oh, yeah, here's the vet tweet. The hot fix for the automated market maker is now public and it is called Ripple 2.1.1. Uh, so the bug involves how the DEX payment engine routes liquidity through AMM pools and order books. More information to follow, guys. So I will link this in the description of the video if you're interested in the AMM stuff. But I wanted to move on. I know developing on the XRP ledger is imperative for XRP to see price discovery. We're going to get there. It's just a matter of time. In the meantime, though, we got to take note and inventory of all the other partnerships and all the other adoption that we're seeing around the world. The ISO GOAT saying this, okay, let me preface by saying this came from a kind of a sketchy website, but I still read it. Take it with a big grain of salt, but guys, something's in here caught his eye. And so this is the website here. It looks like it is a uh, transcript, something that was uh, lifted from somewhere else. However, the information is quite interesting. He does note here, the speaker did emphasize that the ISO 2022 rollout last year was just the beginning as evidenced by the Bank of England's successful migration by July of 2024. So that would be this coming July. The real-world implementation of ISO 2022 for cross-border payments will be completed, uh, and so improving API harmonization for cross-border payments could potentially lead to a significant increase in the price of XRP by the end of 2025. Now, that would coincide with the end of the bull run if we are to estimate that uh, you know the bull run is going to go through 2024 and uh, into the end of 2025. The estimates kind of put us there anyway, on top of which there is speculation about a potential gold-backed currency being tokenized on the distributed ledger with the head of the Russian economy potentially piloting Ripple or the XRP ledger for future payment systems. In isolation, you're thinking, okay, sure, okay, great. But where's the evidence? Where's the proof that is supposed to be in the pudding? Remember, guys, there are still a lot of NDAs that we do not know about that concern other companies, big banks that have partnerships with Ripple. Lord Vendetta posted this. Institutions that buy XRP directly from Ripple have a purpose to use XRP and not to dump it. So think about this. Okay, Ripple selling uh, XRP at a discount to all these institutions. We rag on it. We want to see the price go to $589 and beyond. 
But think about it. The companies that are holding this XRP, are, you, are they just buying it at a discount so that they can dump it on retail? I highly doubt it. If institutions were dumping on us, the price would be 0.00001. Uh, neither Ripple nor institutions dump on us. XRP follows the market. It is as simple as that. So the price of XRP, again, let me reiterate, is just following uh, supply and demand fundamentals in a speculative market. But this is important to note because I also wanted to bring you this. Now, I was researching this last night and the tweet that I had up here in my tabs no longer exists. It's from Cowboy Crypto 313 here. Uh, so within the last 12 hours or so, uh, the account got deleted. Uh, even if I just remove this and click on that, you guys can see that the account no longer exists for whatever reason. Uh, whoops. Let me go back there. Okay. What he posted, though, was a screen grab. The Ripple SEC lawsuit stating that there were 1,700 plus institutions that still are not known yet to the public. So these were under NDAs and Nietzsche Bucks here commented, this is probably the most fascinating aspect of XRP and Ripple that we still don't know about. There are 1700 institutions that want to hold XRP. If so, why? And why buy from Ripple directly? And what are the terms of the contracts? Clarity on this would reveal a whole heck of a lot. I couldn't agree more, says Odd Fisher here. I assume the buyers didn't want to pay more for the XRP off exchanges, which would likely be the situation if they purchased them from the circulating supply and involved larger quantity orders. So that's the other thing, guys, 1,700 plus contracts. And these big NDAs obviously want to hold XRP for a reason, want to use it in a real world setting for real world transactions. And even if this website uh, does seem a little sketchy from the ISO GOAT here, we do know about ISO 2022, July 2024, coming around the corner. That is the final implementation. And this also aligns with this theory about the real world utility happening at the tail end of this bull run. Could we see a significant price increase for XRP by the end of 2025? I don't know. It's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.